Hey, why don't we get some rest soon? Yeah, that's a good idea. We should make sure we're rested for tomorrow. No matter how much we laugh or cry, it all ends tomorrow. Let's make sure it ends well! Yeah. Well, let's get ready for bed. Oh, we are so screwed, aren't we? I weighed the options before me in the back of my mind. Each one of them having the potential to change everything. Not just my life, the entire world. As I contemplated my choices, I couldn't help but recollect the events that brought me here. On the surface, it seemed like any other day. I'd gotten a call to meet up with my two closest friends. First, there was Atsuro, my high school friend. He's a massive dork. Give him anything vaguely techy, and he'll have a half hour long rant prepared about all the different benefits and detriments of it. But despite that, he's honestly one of the most reliable and kind hearted guys I know. Although I wouldn't say that to his face. And beside him was my childhood friend, Yuzu. Although we all call her Yuhu, because eh, you would, wouldn't you? She certainly sticks out in a crowd, which is probably why she has a few self-esteem issues. But at her core, she's a very caring person, and someone I would trust with my life. Anyways, you who had called the two of us out here because she had apparently just received something from my cousin Naoya, strangely enough. Huh? Oh, that's right. I ran into Naoya a moment ago, and he asked me to give these to Atsuro and you. He said that something's come up and he won't be able to make it. Oh, what's up with that? Now you stood us up. Wait, what did he want you to give us? Here, take them. They were a pain to carry around in my bag, too. Handheld game systems? Aren't these those communication player things? I've seen commercials for them before. They're like, play with people around the world. Oh, you know about them, Yuhu? That's exactly what these are. The name Communication Player is a real mouthful, so people just call them comps. Well, they have email and a web browser, so they're more like cell phones than game systems. Ah, uh, huh, is that so? Now you said you'll all need these, don't let go of them. Huh? You'll all need? Well, there are three of them. Still, why would we need these? I mean, I've got a comp back at my own... What the... I've never seen this menu. Did he hold- What? Do you mean he made this himself? Is that even possible? Huh? Don't you know you who? Now he is famous among us programmers. He's a genius. Something like this would be no problem for him. Huh. I had no idea. Is he really that good? Hmm. I can't open this folder. Looks like it's protected. Protected? You mean- it's set so other people can't mess with it? We can't look inside, then. Eh, just leave it to Atsuro. He can probably figure something out. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Good thing I brought my laptop along. Huh? H hey, Atsuro, what are you doing? <laughs> what does it look like? I'm gonna hack this folder wide open. You're hacking it? Hey, now he's gonna be angry if you do that. Oh, please. Knowing that weirdo, he's probably testing us to see if we can break through his security or something. Huh? Are you sure about this? You don't get it, Yuhu. Now he is my teacher. If he took the time to call me up and give it to me, that means he wants me to break his protection scheme. It that doesn't make any sense. Why can't he say hello like a normal person? Let's take a look here. What's his encryption scheme this time? <laughs> Isn't this intense? No, only someone like you would find this exciting, Atsuro. Hmm. Ha! There we go! Now you can at least check your mail for now. Here, these are yours. Email? Wait, we already have messages. Uh, 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 uh and around 1600, a man will be killed in Aoyama? Uh, an explosion will occur in Minato Ku? What? A blackout will affect all of Tokyo? What? What in the hell? 
What a weird message. And it came from Naoya, of all people. Oh, just to be clear, Naoya is my cousin, the guy who gave you who these comps in the first place. He's one of the most brilliant people I've ever met, but to call him eccentric could be something of an understatement. I can never really tell what's going on in that guy's head. Why would he send us a message like this? I mean, he's not the kind of guy you would just do it as like a practical joke. There has to be some kind of meaning to it, but like, what could it be? Well, regardless, just standing here thinking isn't going to accomplish anything. Atsuro proposed that he would continue to examine the files in his comp, and suggested the two of us take a stroll to give him some space to work. So, with nothing better to do, me and Yuhu decided to wander around Tokyo for a while and clear our heads a little bit. Hey, what time is it right now? Oh, uh, around 16.30. 16.30? Uh, I was just thinking about that email in the comp. You know, the one about someone being attacked by a carnivorous beast? It said the attack happened in the Aoyama area, right? It's around the right time, too. Those police cars! They're heading towards Aoyama! Ah. <laughs> There's no way it could be true, right? <sighs> hey, Naoya's apartment is in Aoyama, right? Shouldn't we go check it out? Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Are you sure? I think we should see what happened. Look, if there really was something that was capable of killing Naoya, I'd rather move away from it than towards it. Something's still bothering me. We should go. Alright, fine. Naoya? I'm surprised to see you. What are you doing here? Just checking to see if you were safe. Safe? Oh, you mean the incident in the building. Of course that's what we mean. What's going on anyway? That weird email you made us read made us all jumpy. I see. You're right. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to frighten you. The person who was eaten was a student like yourselves. He lived next door to me. He was eaten? No way! Is what that email said really true? But we got the email before the incident happened! What does this mean? <sighs> Having known you my whole life, maybe you really have figured out a way to predict the future. Your thought process never ceases to amaze me. Usually, one would suspect that the one who sent the email carried out the murder. No wonder you're my cousin. I understand why the two of you came here, but our meeting here is an accident. We shouldn't be talking like this. Hurry and find Atsuro immediately. It's going to begin soon. Begin? What are you talking about? There isn't much time left. Listen carefully to me, both of you. Do not turn away from what is about to happen now. Do not be afraid to stand up against it. That is when the door of truth will open. Overcome your fate. You do realize that it's your talking like that that's the reason Mom kicked you out of the house, right? But now he has simply smiled at the two of us and silently wandered off, leaving his cryptic warning hanging in the air. Before we could really discuss what Naoya had told us, however, we received a call from Atsuro, who informed us that he had finally cracked his own comp. So we quickly headed for Shibuya in order to rendezvous with him and discover what other secrets might be hiding inside these things. As we met back up with him, we filled him in on what we'd found out. How the first message in the email really had come true. Could that email really predict the future? Well, thinking about it now won't get us anywhere. There's still two more predictions to come. Perhaps it'd be better to wait and see if those really do come true as well. For now, Atsuro presented both me and Yuhu with our newly cracked comps, and I turned mine on, hoping to see what secrets lay inside.
demons. Actual, living, breathing demons appeared before us. And before we knew what was happening, they lunged towards us. I recoiled as a massive dogman advanced on me and raised its club slowly above its head. But when the club connected with me, uh, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, it hurt, but a blow like that clearly should have killed me. The monster lunged at me again, and this time I instinctively reacted. And with a single punch, I managed to, uh, I, I, I defeated the monster? As the monster keeled over, it muttered something about a contract. Having been defeated by me, it could now serve me or something, before vanishing before my eyes. I shook my head in bewilderment before looking to see how Yu Hu and Atsuro were doing, only to find that they had come to a similar realization and had managed to defeat the demons assailing them as well. I. I'm still alive. We're all still alive! Ugh, that was so scary! What's going on? What was that? Atsuro, what did you do? I don't know either. I just undid the encryption. The program activated itself. Then the comp is what made this happen just now? That doesn't make any sense. That's just impossible. Let's go to the police. We can't hold on to something this dangerous. Actually, I think we might want to check them out. Check them out? What more is there to see? Calm down, Yuhu. I think he's right. Huh? What are you saying? What do we do if demons come out of these things again? Will you settle down a little? I know why you're freaking out. I was there too, you know. But even after what just happened, is it right to throw everything out immediately? We don't even know if that's the safest thing to do at this point. Yeah, I mean, as much as I hate to be indebted to that guy, Naoya did say we were going to need these. Uh, he did say that we would need them. I'm going to take a deeper look into these comps, okay? Y yeah, okay, but if something comes out, we're making a run for it. I've had it with this. After a bit of digging through the comp's files, Atsuro was able to work out that the comp seemed to be capable of both summoning demons and providing us with the power to actually fight them through something known as a harmonizer. Whatever these things are, whatever the heck Naoya did to them, if we ever run into demons again, they might give us a fighting chance of survival. As a result, we all agreed that it would be for the best to hold on to these comps for the time being. But there was still something bugging me, and I was starting to wonder why the other two hadn't brought it up. What's the deal with these numbers floating over all our heads? One! What, what the fuck does that mean? <sighs> However, my thoughts were interrupted by something rather sudden. Ah! Wait a minute, this is, this is exactly what that email said would happen. But, unfortunately, once again, I didn't have any time to wrap my head around that because, once again, another demon was bearing down on us. And this one looked a hell of a lot stronger than the group we'd fought before. Shit, are we really gonna be able to defeat something this powerful? Are we gonna be okay? Uh, wait, what? What? I've found you, Wendigo. I won't let you get away this time. <laughs> You need to run away! It's too dangerous! Forget her, Atsuro! That demon killed someone! We have to run! Now! A horde of demons, a mysterious woman, a massive explosion... You know what? Screw it! I can't deal with all this right now. One thing at a time. I'll put my faith in believing in that girl can handle herself and focus on defeating the demons around me. And sure enough, she seemed more than capable of dealing with the demons, easily dispatching the more powerful Wendigo, giving us ample opportunity to deal with the stragglers blocking our exit. After the fight, the woman quickly retreated, claiming she had more demons to deal with, and the three of us were given a chance to try to come to terms with what had just happened. It seems that Atsuro had come upon something of an understanding. Those robes that that woman and the person who died were wearing, they look exactly like the robes worn by a group called the Shomen Kai, a sort of internet-based cult that's been gaining some popularity recently. It looks like they're combating the demons. In fact, that explosion we saw earlier may have been a result of a battle between the demons and the Shomen Kai. But, wait a minute, now that I think about it, if they're fighting the demons, that means that, like, they have a way of fighting them, right? So. 
that must mean that they've known about the demons for some time, right? How long exactly have these demons been around? As we pondered that question, suddenly, the lights went out, and a darkness I never could have imagined in the center of Tokyo enveloped the graveyard. Oh my god, again, an email. It was right about everything. The dead student, the explosion, and now a citywide blackout. Even our cell phones don't have any service. What the hell is going on? As we tried to wrap our heads around the situation, we heard a rustling from nearby and turned to see what it was. So, you're all safe. It's as I thought. You're demon tamers as well. What? Aren't you that girl from a little while ago? I am Amane Kazuryu, maiden of the Shomonkai. It's nice to meet you. R right. I'm Atsuro Kihara, and she's Yuzu Tanikawa. Oh, um, hi. And this is... Name's Adam Bell. Kihara, Tanikawa, and... I shall remember your names. The Wendigo seems to have released his minions into this cemetery. I have set a simple barrier around this place tonight. It's best if you stayed here. M minions You mean... Demons? You said we should stay, but this is a cemetery. It's better than dying. Wait here until dawn, then head for the station. I must be going now. Hey, w wait! Damn, what's going on? She said to stay here until the sun came up. What should we do? I don't think there's much else we can do, sadly. We don't have a choice. If she's right, then it's too dangerous to go anywhere now. B but this is a graveyard. Are we going to be okay? Don't worry about it, Yuzu. We'll make it through this together. Y yeah, I don't think I can go far anyway. My legs are like jelly. We don't have a choice. Well, let's take turns keeping a lookout. Ugh, I never wanted it to be morning so hard in my life. And with that, we tried the best we could to get a decent night's sleep. It was one of the longest nights I've ever experienced. So much uncertainty. My entire world felt like it was being flipped upside down. But eventually, somehow, I did manage to drift off and get some sleep. As the next day came around, so many questions jumped to the forefront of my mind. The demons, the emails, the blackout, that girl with the weird haircut. But I pushed them out of the back of my mind and went to greet Yuzu and Atsuro. As we all wearily greeted one another, a sudden beep from my back pocket caught my attention. It was a email on my comp, but what the hell could it be this time? There were two messages on it. One from that Laplace mail, the mail that had predicted the future from yesterday, and one from Naoya. I read Naoya's first, and it explained what that number I've been seeing over people's heads is. It is a... death clock? A clock that tells you when you're going to die. Although, apparently since I'm party leader, I'm the only one who can see it? But wait a minute, what does it mean if your clock says zero? Uh, whatever. I pushed the thought to the back of my mind so I could read the other email first. Just like yesterday's Laplace Mail, it seemed to be predictions of stuff that would happen during the day. Uh, let's see, uh, the blackout will continue all day long, a toxic gas leak will cause the government to close all exits leaving the Yamanote Circle, the area we're currently in, um, and at 13 o'clock a localized blizzard will kill three people. A, a death clock? What's up with that? So we can see how long people have left to live? Hey. Didn't you say before that you could see a number over our heads? Yeah, I, uh, I did say that. Well, what was it? Hey, how many days do I have? It's zero, isn't it? Yesterday you said the number was one, which means our number right now, it's zero, isn't it? Why won't you tell us? <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna die today? That's it! I've had enough! This stupid conversation is over! Come on, let's go! This is all some big hoax! Let's hurry back home! 
I'm not so sure that's gonna work. Um, you're assuming the trains are working. <gasps> what? what do you mean? Calm down, Yuhu. I checked the other email. Don't you remember what it said? All stations are locked down. Now, if that's true, we won't be able to use the trains. But, but, how can we know for sure unless we go? The email might be wrong about that. <sighs> we can only hope. Yeah, I'm with you. No sense in griping about it here. Let's check the nearest station. God, please let Shibuya Station be open. And so we set off, hoping against hope that the trains would still be running. Part of me knew that wasn't going to be the case. We arrived to find a massive crowd milling around the station and a line of soldiers blocking its entrance. One of the soldiers stepped forward and began to explain the situation. And what he said was exactly as the Laplace Mail had described. A gas explosion had caused the blackout in Tokyo, and the leak of said toxic gas had forced the government to institute a lockdown. That left us in something of an awkward situation. But not to be deterred, we decided we had to do something. So we decided to do a little old-fashioned information gathering around Tokyo. See if anyone had any info about the lockdown or the comps or even just some info on a way out of the Yamanote Circle. As we walked around, we ran into a number of interesting individuals. Huh? Who are you guys? Cool. I'm Kaido. You guys need something? A somewhat notorious delinquent with a famously short temper, but he seems like a decent enough guy if you stay on his good side. The name's Eiji, but everyone calls me Jin. I run a bar over that way. A friend of Yoohoo's, it looks like. A local bar owner who often hosts some indie band Yoohoo is apparently a huge fan of. Anyways, he seems very friendly and reliable. Huh? Hey, I know that song! Sorry about the volume. I'm using a battery-powered amp. Blame it on the blackout. Here's hoping my songs get you all out of those blackout blues. Oh my gosh, it's Haru! <laughs> Oh my god, she is attractive. <clears throat> uh, I mean, she's Haru, the lead singer of that indie band you who was really into. Gotta say, her singing voice certainly was impressive, although I couldn't help but notice her death clock also said zero. And finally, as we continued our sweep of Tokyo, we bumped into someone who was apparently an old friend of Atsuro's. What the? A Atsuro? I thought I recognized you, Keisuke. A long time no see. Keisuke helped me out big time in middle school. I wouldn't be here without this guy. I... I wouldn't go that far. Atsuro... No, all of you. Your number. Huh? Did you just say... Never mind. I have to get going. What's up with him? Well, it certainly was an odd interaction, but... You know, what are you gonna do? We continued on regardless. As we did, the crowds we've been passing by so far started to thin out. Hmm, I wonder why. This place seems uh, pretty nice, actually. Surprisingly cool here, especially considering how muggy it's been today. I wonder if this place has some kind of, like, outside air conditioning or something. At hey. 13 o'clock, a localized blizzard will kill three Oh, fuck, we just walked right into it, didn't we? The email, the, the time, the, the three bodies, our death clocks! Oh, God, it's all coming together. Is that the snowman thing from yesterday? Okay, you know what? Fuck that. I am not about to get punked out by a fucking Wendigo. All right, big, tall, and fugly. You want a piece of this, then you come and get it. Did it? <laughs> we we did it! We we changed our destiny! As if on cue, I watched as the clocks over all three of our heads slowly changed from zero to two. Wait, what? Two? I'm still gonna die in two days? <sighs> well, whatever. It's something, I guess. We changed our fate this time. So you know what? We can do it again. And who knows? Maybe we'll be able to find a way out before that all happens. Oh, one thing, though. I forgot to tell you guys. What? 
Quit scaring me like that. Sorry, but I only realized it a moment ago. We've got a problem. Well, what do you mean a problem? We're forgetting something important. We absolutely need these comps to fight, right? Huh? Uh, yeah? The comps run on rechargeable batteries, but there's a blackout right now. Oh, shit. We can't charge them. Right. At this rate, it won't be long before our comps are out of juice. What are we gonna do? Hey! Can we look for, like, a charger or something? Why don't we try going to Akihabara? We can look for a hand-powered charger and a way out of the lockdown at the same time. So we decided to head for Akihabara, and there we met a surprising individual. Wait a sec. Is that... Keisuke? Atsuro? Why are all of you here? We came looking for something. Huh? What's that you got there? Hey, that's a hand-powered charger! The high-capacity version, too! Alright, out with it, Keisuke. Where can we get one? You're looking for one that's comp-compatible, aren't you? Yep. We have to charge our comps or we're sunk. I see. Alright, I'll take you there. This way. That's what you needed, right? Oh, thank God. It's not a problem. We have to help one another when we're in trouble. We sure owe you for this. Thanks, Keisuke. You people are amazing. I've never seen anyone like you. Huh? Your death clock. It used to say zero, but now it's two. You changed your fate. So, you do have a comp, huh? Yes. I too have a comp. It's most likely the same modded version as yours. <sighs> the nerve of you! Running away when you saw our death clocks? Yuzu, cut it out! No, it's alright, Atsuro. It's true. I ran away from you all. Keisuke. By way of apology, I'll tell you this. Did you meet anyone on your way here? Huh? Well, yeah, we ran into a couple of people. As of now, no one within the Yamanote Circle has more than six days to live. At least no one that I've seen. No one who will live longer than six days? What are you saying? The hell's gonna happen in six days? W what does that mean? Like, what exactly? I don't know for sure. All I can definitely say is this. Some kind of catastrophe will occur after six days. Everyone in the lockdown will die. Well, that's certainly a worrying thought, but not a lot we can do about it now. For now, the only real recourse we have is to continue searching for answers. As we continued our aimless walks around town, we met a couple new and a couple old faces. Firstly, we ran into... Oh my god, it's her! Hmm? You're the kids who came to my street show this morning. Whoa! Do you remember every fan who comes to see you? <laughs> no, just a coincidence. Though I've seen you in the crowd pretty often, huh? I usually see you cheering by yourself. But you had a couple others with you today, but one of them didn't seem too into my songs. <laughs> oh, come on! It's not every day you get to hear Haru perform live. It's okay. Everyone has their own tastes, right? What? No, 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 no! I thought you were gorgeous! <clears throat> I, uh, I thought you were a really good singer. Trust me, it's cool. I don't mind at all. Oh, god damn it, what's wrong with me? Anyways, she seemed to be having some kind of conversation with a member of the Shomunkai, but he quickly scurried away as soon as we showed up. After that, we ran into an apparently famous cosplayer. I'm Midori Komaki. Nice to meet you. An odd one for sure, but one you'd be unlikely to forget. She seemed very energetic and outgoing, though perhaps a bit childish. Finally, we passed by Shiba Park, where we saw a group of Shomunkai members giving a speech to the public. At its center stood that girl that saved us from the Wendigo last night. Next to her was the man giving the speech, the apparent leader of the Shomunkai. He spouted some rhetoric about how God punished mankind in the past by splitting up their languages, and how a new ultimatum from him is coming soon. Regardless, once his speech was done, the members of the Shomunkai began to move about through the crowd and interact with the populace, which gave us a chance to meet with that girl from last night. We met yesterday. Allow me to introduce myself formally. I am Amane Kazuryu. A maiden of the Shomonkai. She was a difficult person to get a read on. Her face showed almost no expression through her whole conversation. And yet, for some reason, a part of me just felt like I could trust her. 
In any event, we were able to actually glean one useful piece of information out of her. Apparently, the Shomonkai were the ones who requested Naoya create the comps. Hmm, certainly is a lot to think about. As the three of us pondered what it could all mean, a sudden noise drew our attention. What's wrong? Is something going on over at Bugeikon? I thought I heard something too. Is that... singing? Hey, that's one of Haru's songs! Let's go check it out! I, uh... Oh! Haru! Oh, hell no! Like I'm gonna let some demon harm her! Haru, you, you gotta run to us! You guys, you should leave me here and run away. What? Do you, you think I'm just gonna leave you here alone? Uh, thanks, but don't kill yourselves in the process, okay? Fine! I'll do it myself! Thankfully, the three of us were able to drive off the demons before any serious harm befell Haru. Still, afterwards, we had to ask her why she was acting so... blasé in the face of literal demons. Haru, are you alright? Yeah, thanks to you guys. So you can summon demons, too. Uh, um, yeah. But that's not as surprising as seeing you here. You were surrounded by all those demons and never so much as screamed. I'd have been fine by myself if my sequencer hadn't run out of batteries. Sequencer, huh? Sequencer is a device that plays back instrumental data. It's like a composition tool. You guys are demon tamers, but not like me. You use a different method. I summon my demons by singing in sync with the sequencer. Huh? You can summon demons too, Haru? So that's why you took out that sequencer a second ago. Did Naoya make your sequencer too then? Naoya? Who? No, I borrowed this from someone over six months ago. Someone? Yeah, Aya, the old leader of D.Va, lent it to me. The batteries are dead, so for now it's just a useless hunk of junk. But I still like to have it close by. Do you think you can get it working again? Well, I'd like to, but they're all sold out of that kind at the convenience stores. Oh, c can I have a look at the sequencer's terminal? Hmm? Uh, sure. Damn, it's no good. I thought we might have been able to use the hand charger to juice it back up. Well, thanks anyway. Were you worried about me? Don't worry. Even if it's not working, this is still like a security blanket for me. But a security blanket? <laughs> Don't overthink it. Oh, okay. So you first summoned a demon over six months ago? Man, you're way ahead of us! No, the first time it happened was about a month and a half back. Still, that's more experience than ours. We just started yesterday. Yesterday? You've come a long way in two days, then. Amazing. That reminds me. Hey, you there. Yeah, I thought so. You've got this dangerous smell to you. <laughs> but I kind of like that about you. Oh, ho, ho! Nelly! <laughs> well, thanks again. I'm gonna get going, but I hope we run into each other again. Of all people, who'd have thought she could summon demons too? I guess demons have been around Tokyo way before we knew about them. Yeah, looks like. The guys in Shomonkai seem to have been using demons from way back. Wait! Did you check Haru's death clock? It said zero last time, right? No, no. He's looking at you, kid. Huh? What? Uh, um... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it, it went up to two. Oh, my God. We really did it! We saved Haru's life! Aha! That proves we can change other people's death clocks too! <laughs> Isn't that great? Of course it is! Right? Haha! <laughs> Damn straight! Yeah! So now that we know we can increase the time on the death clock for others, let's keep at it and do the same for everyone trapped in the Yamanote Circle! In any event, it was getting late and we were getting tired. Unfortunately, we didn't really have anywhere we could go at this point. Our investigation for a way out of the Yamanote Circle 
had so far been fruitless. So, our only real option was to sleep out in the open. We found a grassy patch in Shibuya, I volunteered to take first watch, and we settled down for our second night in this blackout. We were awoken early the next morning to the sound of helicopters. It was the military giving an update about the supposed gas leak. At this point, it seems pretty clear that demons are probably the real reason why the government are here. As we discussed the situation amongst ourselves, a familiar beep went off and we all instinctively checked our comms. <sighs> Let's see here. At 1700 in Shiba, a monster will appear. But there will be no casualties. That's nice. Um, at 1800 in Ikebukuro, a monster will appear and uh, 50 people will be killed. That's less nice. And uh, throughout the day, demons will be sighted throughout the city. <sighs> at this point, the males have been far too accurate to discredit anymore. We have to believe that this is going to happen. But 50 people? Really? Still, we did change our fate yesterday. Maybe something similar could happen today? Regardless, the only real thing we can do is continue to explore and hope to find any info at all about a way out of here. We passed a couple familiar faces, like Gan and Kaido, though they didn't seem to have made any more progress than we had. We also managed to at least acquire some food. It looks like the government airdropped some provisions at a few key locations. However, they just dropped the containers and left them unsupervised. <sighs> this is definitely going to start getting sketchy if this lockdown lasts for much longer. We also bumped into a few new faces. First, an older man named Honda. I'm Yasuyuki Honda. We're all locked up in here, so let's try and help each other out. He seemed to be in much the same boat as we were, and was currently in the process of gathering info on a way out of the Yamanote Circle. Then we ran into another old acquaintance of Atsuro's. I'm Mari Mochizuki. It's nice to meet you. I'm currently a nurse at an elementary school. Apparently she was an old teacher of his, and she seemed like a rather kind and compassionate person. Although... <sighs> I don't know why. I felt like her eyes looked a little hollow somehow. Also didn't bode well that her death clock said two days, but can't worry about that right now. Finally, we met a reporter named Shoji. She was the first person we came across who seemed to have any sort of information about what was going on. For example, she knew that the government was keeping this place locked down to keep monsters trapped inside, although she didn't seem to believe that demons actually exist. In any event, in exchange for giving her an interview detailing our experiences of the past couple days, she gave us the first useful piece of information we'd gotten so far. Apparently, there might be a way out of the Yamanote Circle, a small, secret, relatively unknown passage hidden away in the Akasaka Tunnel. Finally, some sort of evidence on a way out of here. The three of us quickly thanked the reporter and headed off towards the Akasak Tunnel. Unfortunately, upon our arrival, we found a small group of demons blocking our path. However, it quickly got worse because one of the demons pulled out a comp and started to summon more demons to fight us, shouting something about using the comp to summon Master Belder the Immortal or something like that. Crap, we didn't think they'd be able to actually use a comp. The three of us, figuring that we needed to get past them and that leaving a comp in the hands of demons was far too dangerous, decided to fight. And after a drawn up for all of the enemies constantly spawning reinforcements, we managed to defeat all the demons present and get a hold of their comp before it could be used in such a way again. But once again, we did not have long to celebrate because the commotion caused by our fight had alerted her. Don't move! Ah! What is it now? Oh my god! A gun! This is bad! What happened? Report at once! Yes, sir. A few demons took control of the tunnel, but they were eliminated by those kids and their demons. They used their own demons? Could they be our targets? Damn it! We have to stop the contamination area from spreading any further! Contamination area? Hey, that doesn't sound good at all. What? What's going on? What should we do? Answer me! What are you all doing here? If you won't cooperate willingly... Ah! Run! Stop! 
Jesus Christ, I cannot believe the government would poke guns on its own civilians. <sighs> it's hard to say who exactly those people were. I mean, they're probably some part of the government, but they don't look like regular soldiers you see guarding the perimeter. They do definitely seem to be trying to contain the demons, though. But the worst part is now, the only lead we had of any chance of escape is lost to us. Of course it couldn't be that easy. For now, we better pull back and figure out if there's any other sort of exits before trying to force our way through that one. The rest of the day was a long day of fighting. Like the Laplace Mail had said, demons were appearing in more and more places. In one fight, we helped out Kaido, who had apparently teamed up with that older guy Honda. It looked like Kaido was actually actively seeking out these demons, trying to collect Maka. Which is odd, because as far as I can tell, the only thing Maka is good for is the demon auction. Maybe he's trying to become more powerful with more powerful demons? Uh, whatever. We asked him why, and he claimed it was to look into something called the Bloodless Murders. A string of mysterious killings that happened a few months back, where all the victims were found drained of their blood. Apparently his brother was one of the victims, although, if I'm being honest, that didn't really seem to be Kaido's main reason for investigating the murders. Well, whatever. As we moved on, another one of the Laplace male's predictions came true. A group of demons attacked Shiba, but the male said nobody would be killed, but this place is swarming with civilians. Shit. Well, the three of us weren't about to sit back and watch a massacre, so quickly as we could, the three of us began to clear out as many demons as possible. And at first it was going well. We were able to safely evacuate all the civilians near the initial demon attack, but unfortunately it was a large area. We heard a scream coming from a nearby park and instantly knew demons were appearing there too. We rushed over as fast as we could to try and help, only to find... Be off, demon! I won't let you through here! Everyone, do not be afraid! We will protect you with our lives! <laughs> ah! We're going to be killed after all! You mustn't give up! Lady Amane! Everyone, please stay calm. The demons want your fear and negative emotions. Quiet your hearts and believe in salvation. Heaven will not forsake those who believe. Oh, merciful majesty, give me strength. Drive evil away and protect us. Ah! Is, is that a demon? Did the Shomokai summon a demon? Oh wait, it doesn't look like the other demons. She looks like a goddess. Holy, it's a goddess! We're saved! Wow, it took out the demon in a single blow! tough to say what the Shomankai are up to. On the one hand, they do appear to be helping people wherever they go. They are one of the few things actively protecting civilians from the demons. But at the same time, they were the ones who asked Naoya to make these comps. They clearly knew about the demons before this whole mess started. It's tough to imagine that they don't have some kind of part in the reason for this whole lockdown. But as we were discussing that, something suddenly dawned on me. The Laplace Mail, it predicted two demon attacks. And the second one at Ikabukuro was set to have over 50 casualties. We headed over there as quickly as we could, only to find... Get a grip on yourself! You realize we're in serious danger, right? What's happening? This isn't normal at all! Daddy, help me! Come on, don't give up. Everyone has already gone ahead. Use that entrance over there to get underground. Hurry! I wish I didn't have to resort to this, but I've got no choice. Summoning program activate. Jack Frost! Pyro Jack! Hey, what do you know? Keisuke's got some good taste in demons. I mean, uh, crap! Midori and Keisuke are in trouble. What's more, it seems like a bunch of the people were trapped in the building behind them, cowering from the demons. And well, based on the zeros floating above their heads and the time and location, it wasn't hard to imagine that this was the predestined massacre the Laplace Mail had predicted. However, we've changed the future already. We know it's possible. With our help, we'll make sure to save Keisuke, Midori, and all the people behind them. 
Oh, it was a tricky fight. We had to manage between rushing to Midori and Keisuke's side to keep them alive, while not getting ourselves picked off in the process. But before long, Midori, the only one without a comp to protect herself, was able to make it to the relative safety of the building. With her no longer a concern, the four of us were able to easily clean up the remaining demons. Whew, it's over. Keisuke's safe, and we prevented the Laplace mail from coming true, right? There were supposed to be over 50 victims, but we saved them all. <laughs> we're pretty good, huh? Damn straight. Woo! Awesome! Anyways, we sat down to have a little chat with Keisuke. Midori also hesitantly exited from the building to give us a hearty thank you. Thankfully, Keisuke and Midori's numbers both had shot up to five days, but that still doesn't change the fact that everyone within the Yamanote circle seems to have, at most, five days to live. We brainstormed for a bit on what the heck could happen in five days that kills everyone in such a massive area, but came up blank. We also filled KSK in on some of the stuff we found, like the exit being blocked by the military, and demons capable of using comps to summon more demons. To prove our point, we pulled out one of the few comps we had taken from the demons to show him what they were- uh, de de oh, what, what? Hey! Gimme! So what do I do? I can do it now, right? That- that's true, but- Then that's just what I'm gonna do! What? Please, let me do it too! Uh... I... I mean, sure? Now we're talking! It's mine now! Hey, wait! It's too dangerous to be by yourself! Whatever, I mean, she can use it to protect herself. What's the worst that could happen? <sighs> well, regardless, it's getting light. Thankfully, I guess, it looks like several shelters have been set up for people to sleep in, so at least we won't have to sleep in shifts tonight. However, as we made our way towards one of the shelters, we saw an odd scene. It was Kaido and Mari having something of an argument. We didn't get close enough to really hear too much of what it was about, but it seemed to be about his brother. I guess these two know each other somehow. Well, whatever their relationship might be, we decided not to interject, and instead continued on our way towards the shelter. We gained a bit of info today, but we're still no closer to escape. But there is one thing very clear. We can change our fate. These emails and death clocks are not absolute. So even though we may end up with a zero over our heads again tomorrow, we can... No, no, we will use what we have and stop whatever horrible end is waiting for us. <sighs> With that said, we said our goodnights and settled in for another long night. We didn't say much to each other the next day. Even knowing that fate could be changed, the weight of those zeros hanging over our heads was still unpleasant to say the least. It wasn't long before a familiar beeping caught our attention, and we got to read another of the Laplace Vale's predictions. At 1800, Elder will be revived, causing over 300 casualties. That's, uh, that's it. That's all the mail has to say. What the? 300 victims? No way! Belder! That's the demon's boss. He's finally here. It'll happen at Aoyama Cemetery. We'd better remember that. <sighs> We're gonna have to kill it, aren't we? Like I've been saying, this demon's immortal, isn't it? How can we defeat that? Let's look for a way out of the lockdown until sunset. We don't have much time. Yeah, I really don't want to die here. Let's run away as fast as we can. Sorry, am I interrupting anything? Oh, Keisuke, what's up? I've been looking for you three. Uh, why? Well, something's come up. It's about Midori. Letting her have a comp may have been... a mistake. What do you mean? Okay, she started saying she's going to use the comp to help people out. We let her have the comp so she could protect herself against demons, but... Wait, she didn't fail the demon summoning contract, did she? No, she beat the demon that emerged and formed a contract with it, with my help. But ever since she started swearing to help people, her death clock decreased. Huh? I told her to give up the comp, but she wouldn't listen. But Midori hasn't grouped up with anyone, right? Shouldn't she be able to see her own death clock? Right. But she doesn't even realize that's what the number above her head means. I tried to explain it to her, but she won't listen at all. At this rate, she will die tomorrow. That's why I want you to help me convince her somehow. What should we do? It 
it's your call. You guys don't mind helping someone in need, right? It's nice of you to consider us, but it's cool. Abandoning a friend is just wrong. Let's help him out, okay? Thanks. I'm really glad I got to know you guys. I'll register my comp with yours to become an official member of your group. But are you sure you really want to do that? Hmm? What do you mean? He's talking about our death clock readout. You did see our death clock, right? Oh yes, I did. What about it? What about it? We're gonna die today! And you're still gonna... Funny, isn't it? I ran from you once, but now I'm trusting you with my life. But I've come to understand something. A little, anyway. And that is... I admire your strength. The way you chase life while protecting others' lives. Instead of running away for the lack of that, I want to live a better life. Case get... I'm one of you now. Let's do our best. Okay, but you're getting benched once I get some better party members. <laughs> of course. I'll do my best to prove useful. Well, we got a new member of our crew, but with it comes another responsibility we have to deal with by the end of the day. Saving Midori. For now, our top priority, on top of looking for her, will be trying to find any info we can about this Belder. The demons we fought before called him immortal, and, well, if that really is the case, he could be in some serious trouble. In any event, as per usual at this point, we visited some of the people and places we'd been before. We reconnected with that reporter Shoji, who sadly had no new info for us, but seemed to be more believing in that whole demon thing. Jin, who was still trying to keep everything together through this lockdown, and seemed to have gained a comp of his own. And Mary, who revealed a bit of her past, how her boyfriend was actually Kaido's little brother and had been killed in the Bloodless Murders. Speaking of Kaido, we also ran into him, and he and I, uh, had a bit of an odd conversation. Anyways, about that redhead who's always with you. Is she your girl? You who? She's, she's a good friend. Just a friend. <laughs> Are you that friggin' dense? Eh, <sighs> guess it has nothing to do with me. I got a girl on my mind too. <laughs> it ain't like me, but I can't do a damn thing. Oh, let me guess. Miss Mari? N not so loud, man! But, yeah. <clears throat> it's her. We go way back. Me, my bro, and Mari used to play together when we were kids. But she's older than me, so she still treats me like a younger brother. Damn it. Hey, so... You seem kind of like a player. Um, no offense. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, dog. I'm a total player, yo. You, uh... <clears throat> got any tips on how to snag an older girl? Uh, ask her Master. for a massage? Um, I, I mean, uh, save her from danger, maybe? Danger? Well, there's plenty of that in this damn lockdown. And on top of that, she's been poking her nose into some trouble. Makes me worried. You know the bloodless murders? Mari's after the killer, too. All this mess probably gave her the idea that the killer could be a demon. But she ain't a demon tamer. Even if she finds the killer, it's just gonna kill her. Then go and save her? What are you talking about? Of course I'm gonna... Oh, I get it. If I rescue her from the killer and show how badass I am, she'll be all over me. <laughs> I was gonna nail that bastard anyway. Yeah, works out perfectly. Anyway, sorry for wasting your time like this. Hope we run into each other again. Oh yeah, if it wasn't clear, don't tell that redhead and nerdlinger about this. Got it? You breathe one word, and I'll rip those weird headphones off your skull. See ya. Eh, go get him, tiger. In any case, after that, we figured we should try giving that escape tunnel another go. It's probably still guarded by that military lady, but maybe we could find a way to reason with her. I am Captain Misaki Izuna. I'm a member of the Special Counter Demon Squad, here to eradicate the enemy. Izuna was wary of us at first, but after some convincing from Atsuro, she agreed to at least talk with us. 
Unfortunately, we weren't able to glean anything too concrete from her, just that the government and all its forces, including her, were willing to go to extreme lengths to prevent demons from escaping the Yamanote Circle. But from the way she said it, it definitely sounded like she knew something. Something terrible that would happen in four days' time. We left with our heads hung low. Judging by how serious the government and forces are, it's probably safe to assume that there really is no way out of the Yamanote Circle. But I guess that just means our goals have changed, hasn't it? We shouldn't be looking for a way out of here. We should be looking for a way instead to get rid of this lockdown, remove the reason for why it needs to exist. As we made our way slowly back to the center of the Yamanote Circle, we were stopped by someone we'd never seen before. Someone that, for some reason, made the hairs of my back stand on end. Hey, that's one fine miss you've got with you. Is she available? Well, what's this guy's deal? Hey, she's not for sale, bud. Well, duh. <laughs> fine, fine. Don't get old Ben out of shape. Hmm? Hey, now that I get a good look at you, you're... Well, well, so it's you, just like now you said. This really is amusing. Hell yeah, huh? Hey, tell me, why is it that you don't have a death clock? <laughs> You're uniquely perceptive, though I can't say I'm surprised. Say, have you ever given any thought to your own future? Your destiny? Your death clock currently reads zero, doesn't it? So you'll die soon, no question. The agent of your death is the leader of Lament, the immortal unifier of demons, Belder. No one can stop his coming. The banquet of blood will begin. Amid their lamentation, humans will fall prey to Belder, and you will be among the dead. Tell me, what do you plan to do about it? I'll kick his ass like I have every other demon I've run into. You seem eager for battle. Here, I thought you'd run with your tail between your legs. Now, shall I give you one last piece of advice before I bid you adieu? The immortal Belder has long been protected by a vow all living beings agreed to. The terms of the vow forbid any of them from bringing harm to dear Belder. But there was one being that was overlooked. It's here, inside this lockdown. If you succeed in finding it, even you might be able to thwart his attacks. <sighs> what an unsettling individual. Well, regardless, he did give us a hint of some kind, even if it was ridiculously vague. Somewhere within the Yamanote Circle, there's one object that can harm Belder. Guess we should ask around and see what that could be, but where do we even begin with something like, uh... Wait a minute, do you guys hear singing? <gasps> Oh, god damn it! her clock zero again! Haru, we're coming to rescue you! Quick as we could, the four of us swiftly dealt with the demons swarming around Haru. Ugh, what is attracting all these demons to her? <sighs> Thanks. You guys saved me again. I made it this far, but it was touch and go this time. Are you suicidal or something? You didn't bat an eye that entire fight! <sighs> ah, how dare you say that to Haru! Pretty perceptive, but I have no reason to answer you. No, it's... You're right. I just... I, I don't want to watch someone just throw their life away. <laughs> you get it, don't you? You're a lot more mature than you look. <laughs> um, anyway, are you really being targeted by demons? <laughs> Maybe so. Anyways... Thanks for everything. Man, if you could just use your sequencer, you'd stand a fighting chance. Well, nothing I can do with the batteries, Dad. So it goes. Though to be honest, if I could, I'd really like a peek at the data in it. Oh, why's that? Hmm? Oh, the sequencer's owner left me a little homework along with it. She told me to finish what there was of the song left inside. The song's in my head, but not having it in front of me definitely slows me down. 
Even with everything going on, you're writing a song? Wow, the mark of a true musician. <laughs> it's nothing so noble. Thanks, though. Hey, you're an interesting one. Let's take a breather and chat sometime. It'll be on me. Yes, I mean, yeah, totally, whenever it's cool. <laughs> I like your attitude. It's pretty cool. Well, be seeing you. Hey, what was that about? Uh-oh, you who's got a rival. Haru's gonna snatch him away. W w what are you saying? There's nothing between me and... <gasps> uh, uh, well... Yeah, uh, <laughs> Atsuro, hey, you get back here right now. Regardless, I guess we did manage to save her, so we continued on our hunt for an item to defeat Belle. Anything at all that could, uh, do you guys hear shouting? I'm Magical Dolly, the warrior of love. My magical punishment strikes all demons who do evil. Get out of here while I draw their attention. Activating comp! Come out, Ketchy! Oh my god, how many times are we going to get sidetracked? Midori, we're coming to rescue you! Ugh, another person to save, and this time there's a group of hysterical civilians alongside her! To make matters worse, it seems like the people were having trouble distinguishing between the demons attacking them and the ones we were using to save them. Ugh. But thankfully, before long, we are able to drive the demons back and meet up with Midori when... Behold, mortals, it is I, the immortal Belder. Alas, these chains still keep me rooted in the underworld. However, I shall be free through the lamentation of these here humans. Oh, fuck, this is seriously bad news. The Laplace Mail said he wasn't going to show up till 1800. Um, whatever, we need to get out of here, guys. Come on, everyone, full retreat back to the, uh, Mad Madori, what the hell? Oh, a foolish mortal thinks it's possible to harm me. No way I'm giving up. Heroes always face impossible odds, but... No, Midori! He's immortal! You can fight, but you won't win. You have to run for now. I can't just run away with a demon like this on the loose. You guys can run. I'm gonna stay and fight. We can't run away without you. You have to come with us, Midori. Please! Oh, fine! But just this once, okay? <sighs> Midori finally convinced the lot of us ran as fast as we could to get away. And somehow, we managed it. Barely. Ah, oh, we made it. I thought we were dead meat. That's Belder? There's no way we can win against that. Th thanks, I guess. But I would have been fine by myself. For the love of God, don't be suicidal like that! Ugh. Midori, it's not too late. You need to give up your comp. What? What are you talking about? I won't lose! I just have to stay away from that immortal thingy, right? Look at your death clock! Death clock? I'm sure you can see it. It's the number displayed above people's heads. That number tells how many days the person has left to live. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. You've had only one day left ever since you took the comp and swore to help people. But if you give up the comp right now... Quit lying to me! Then what? I'm gonna die tomorrow? Well, it says zero for you guys. If all that's true, how come you're still alive? Huh? Because we could die at any moment! What? What are you talking about? That makes it sound even more like a lie! That's it! I'm not listening to you guys anymore! I'm gonna go beat up all the bad guys! Midori, if you hadn't run from that last battle, you could have died, you know? Hasn't it occurred to you that Belder might not be the only immortal demon out there? You're taking the demons too lightly! One mistake and they'll tear you apart. Midori, it'll be too late once you're dead. But, 
But is it okay to not help people? Is it okay to just watch them die? I hate you, KSK. You guys are all dummies! Midori! Why won't she understand? <sighs> well, at the very least, her death clock is at one. She should be fine for today. Which is more than I can say for us, because we still haven't found anything pertaining to Belder's weakness. And if that's what he's really like, then we really need to find that weakness. Unfortunately, though, our string of detours had only just begun. First, Jin pulled me aside to talk a bit about Haru's past, which I gotta admit I was interested in. Could I borrow you for a second? I want to talk in private. This is about Haru. I heard from her. It seems she's told you a lot about herself. <laughs> she must really trust you. That's why I wanted to say, don't get too involved with her. Oh. Did that come off wrong? Uh, Haru's not a bad girl, she's just... different. If she felt betrayed by someone she opened up to, she'd end her life. She's that unstable now. I don't want to see her end up like that. Or to see you get hurt as a result. You can't just avoid reality. I see. Sorry. <laughs> I think I see now why she trusted in you. You know, you're not the first I've heard that from. Aya said the same thing. Aya? Yeah, my lover. Though, she disappeared six months ago. What happened? <sighs> I'll tell you some other time. But back to Haru. She doesn't trust anyone precisely because she wants to so badly. Aya once told me, Haru's too scared to be hurt again. So she shuts people out. Aya managed to break through her and Haru opened up to Aya. But without Aya, Haru's going back to her old ways. I don't want to see that happen. I'll try to help out in any way I can. As a favor to me too, try not to do anything that would hurt Haru even more. Also, I told Haru that Aya went overseas for a while to study music. If she knew the truth, she'd blame herself, thinking it happened because of her. Why? Before Haru joined D.Va, Aya was the lead vocalist. Aya was impressed by Haru's talent and gave up the lead. The other members all agreed. But to this day, Haru feels like she stole Aya's place. If she knew Aya went missing, she'd think she drove her away. That can't happen. And what if I do tell her? Well, like I said, nothing she does would surprise me. Not even suicide. The lockdown has made Haru worse. She can't even write songs in this blackout. I'm putting her in your hands. Then we got caught up in a demon hunting contest with Kaido because... Uh... <laughs> the hell are you doing here? Can't you see we're busy hunting? Get your sorry asses out of here. Sorry, what? Like you should talk crap for brains. What'd you just call me? Oh, you'll die for that loud mouth. Ah, I'm so mad. We won't lose to them, right? God damn it, you who time and place. Although it did show us something interesting. It looks like Kaido somehow managed to get his hands on an extraordinarily powerful demon without the use of the demon auction. I didn't even know that was possible. Finally, we passed by Midori, who was talking with a, uh, somewhat unorthodox individual. Why am I so strong, you ask? Well, you see, that's the power of love. As you have love, you can stand up even if you get knocked down. As long as your heart is alive, you'll never lose. <laughs> Chuck another one up to Magical Dolly, Warrior of Love. Love to demons too. Uh, well, that's certainly happened. But that doesn't change the fact that we're still unprepared to fight Belder, and we're starting to run out of time. If only there was something we could, uh, uh, what the hell's going on over there? Demons of Belder, we will never succumb to you. How odd. They're surrounded by demons, but it doesn't even phase them. Could they be 
Demon Tamers too? We'll never let you have the Devil's Fuge's power. Belter will collapse at our feet. Devil's Fuge. I feel like I've heard it. That's um, that's mistletoe, I think. Wait, could that be the item that allows us to defeat Belter? Hey, hey, you! Would it be possible to get our hands on some of that Devil's Fuge? You, you have comps, servants of Belter. I'll kill you all. Servants of Belder? Where did you get that idea? You can't hide behind words! Now die! God damn it! Ugh, there's nothing for it then. After a long struggle, we were able to both wipe out the demons as well as break all the enemy's comps before they could do any serious damage to us. Do you not follow Belder? Or is there a dissension within his faction? Dude, what are you talking about? Why would we follow Belder? All we wanted was the Devil's Fuge. You would have known that if you'd just listened. Nevertheless, it is the power of the Devil's Fuge you desire. Jeez, yeah, and so what? The Devil's Fuge is the only way to fight Belder, right? Of course we need it. Isn't that why you have it? <laughs> I see. <laughs> you know nothing. <laughs> How entertaining. But what do you mean? Ha! Ah, very well then. Take the Devil's Fuge. Do what you can to be triumphant. Defeat Belder. What should we do? This is kind of creepy. Let's just get out of here. We got what we needed. Yeah, we have the Devil's Fuge now and all. I can't shake this feeling. Just who are these people? Ugh, if they were demons, I'd punch them until they told us. <laughs> the time will come when you learn the true meaning of this battle. <sighs> okay, so this uh, land will let us defeat Belder, huh? Can't say I'm too confident in it, but well, I guess demons aren't exactly the most logical of entities. It's the only chance we got. And it wasn't a moment too soon because the time of reckoning is upon us. We won't lose. We're all ready this time. Yeah, and we've got the Devil's Fuse with us. We'll show him what humans can do. This demon holds our remaining days in his hands. Let's go, everyone. We must survive. Ho, 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 ho. So you're the one I've been sensing. Behold, you stand in the majesty of Belder, the immortal one who... Yeah, yeah, about that. Aren't you... Balder? I'm sorry, what? You know, uh, the immortal being whose mom asked everyone not to kill him, but Loki tricked Ivy and then Thor killed him with it or something. Balder, the A-L, the Norse god. Well, you know, we were, like, doing a thing with the bells, so I decided to alter my name slightly. It's not that noticeable. No, no, it really is. Honestly, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you really think about it. Oh, and I suppose you know all about sense, huh, Adam Bell? Sure sounds like the name of a kid born in downtown Tokyo now, doesn't it? I, uh, you know what, this is starting to get too meta for me, so I, I'm just gonna kill you now, okay? What? No! How could I possibly lose to a mortal like this? No! I can't believe it! We did it! We defeated the powerful Belder and our death clocks went up by three! <sighs> a somewhat unsettling number considering everyone else's four days, but at the very least it gives us time. We were super worn out after the battle that had just transpired, but I didn't feel like I could rest just yet. There was something bugging me. That guy. That guy who knew Nalia. Who knew of a way to defeat Belder. He clearly knows a lot more about this whole situation than he's letting on. We couldn't really talk to him much before because we were so desperate to find a way to fight Belder, but now I've got a few questions for him. How are you still alive? Didn't you fight Belder? We kicked his ass, like I said. What? You defeated Belder? Come now, <laughs> really? You? <laughs> Splendid! You're good. You're very good. 
I didn't imagine a human like you could defeat Belder. This comes as quite a shock. The battle to become King of Bell is getting interesting. What? King of Bell? Hmm? Don't tell me you thought everything was over simply because you defeated Belder. You can't be serious. That was only the beginning. You've livened things up. So I'll let you in on a few things. Just tell me what the hell's going on. Essentially, demons crowned with the name of Bell are having a war of superiority. Over what? The winner will assume the throne of Bell and become its king. Other than Belder, it involves Belial, Jezebel, Belzebul, and Belbereth. Now that you've beaten Belder, you have his power. There's no escape for you anymore. And why me exactly? Why indeed? Isn't that a question your brother knew the answer to? Why don't you just give in and accept your fate? You have no choice but to fight. Look, you can just go and fuck right off if you think I'm going to lay down and do as you say. <laughs> it won't do you any good to get angry at me, you know. One last thing before I go. In three days' time, you'll have to fight the demon Belial. If you want to survive, you'd best strengthen yourselves. Don't let me down. Well, we got some answers from him, but it looks like this thing is far from over. Whatever the case, we were all exhausted after everything that had happened that day. I don't know how, but we somehow managed to drag ourselves to a nearby shelter. There, not saying much to each other, we all crawled into our separate beds and got ready to pass out at a moment's notice. However, as I lay there, <laughs> King of Bell, huh? <laughs>